to a former shell who will immigrate from Fiji who will introduce himself and his wife. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, my name is Apur Bashir and uh, in this presentation I am going to present about a tool which can prioritize uh, ASD candidate variants from known as well as unknown autism genes using whole exome sequencing data. Talking about autism genetics, uh, it's a highly heritable neurodevelopmental disorder with high heritability estimates. That means most of the reasons behind ASD is genetic and uh, different whole exome sequencing and whole genome sequencing studies have detected common and rare high impact variants. Most recently and uh, ultra rare uh, de novo variants also contribute to ASD liability but the liability is highest in case of uh, common variants. Until now, uh, there are hundreds of genes have been discovered uh, from different whole exome and whole genome sequencing studies and different types of variants can uh, play some role in case of ASD uh, uh, for example in case of uh, single nucleotide variants it's a single nucleotide change in a specific position and uh, insertion and deletions are some chunk of DNA uh, change in a specific position. <coughs> ASD has a shared genetic uh, predisposition which overlaps with other phenotypes like schizophrenia, intellectual disability, microcephaly etc. Um, a recent study have uh, found uh, oligogenic architecture of autism uh, that means that two and more low, uh, moderate to high impact uh, candidate variants may additively increase case to risk. Talking about whole exome sequencing, uh, this technology is pretty much uh, 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 widely used one. Uh, it's a cost effective technology to uh, target the coding regions of the DNA and uh, the goal is to detect candidate variants from a whole chunk of uh, uh, list of variants. But in this process, uh, it, it's a little bit uh, uh, difficult to detect all these different kind of variants from the whole exome sequencing data uh, because many labs use different kind of uh, guidelines and scores to uh, annotate and interpret the sequence variants. So, that, that, uh, due to that, uh, in the year 2015, uh, American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics, uh, they published some guidelines to, uh, to annotate and interpret the sequence variants as likely pathogenic, pathogenic, benign, host, etc. And some tools published after after publishing the uh, ACMG guidelines, like tools like Interval, Tapes, Charger, etc. And what they do, they do is uh, they annotate different kind of information and interpret eventually uh, the sequence variants. But <coughs> there is a problem um, in in implementing all those criteria because because ACMG provides lesser weightage towards inherited type of variant, for example, autosomal recessive uh, sex link type of variants, and they can have some potential role in case of autism. So, so since, uh, since such kind of variants can play some major role in autism, but they could not reach the pathogenicity level due to the strict criteria of ACMG. And another issue is, uh, is the heterogeneity in implementing different type of software like ACMG did not provide some guidelines about selecting some specific tools how many tools to to be used to say that this particular variant has a deleterious effect or damaging effect etc so we uh, we uh, did some uh, analysis about uh, this particular tool the con uh, concordance between them in detecting likely pathogenic pathogenic and gene disrupting variants and uh, if you see this particular region so these are mostly uh, mismatched with interval and tabs so these are inherited type of variants so since SMG could not detect them as um, high pathogenic and likely pathogenic they were uh, termed as variants of uncertainty variants 
so the problem was the interpretation part. Now coming to the uh, prioritization because the uh, detecting likely pathogenic or pathogenic or likely gene disrupting variants doesn't mean that they are uh, involved in uh, autism uh, uh, patients. So it needs some prioritization and uh, doing this prioritization manually takes a lot of time and it's a time uh, labor intensive task. So, <coughs> but to achieve the, 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 this uh, problem, uh, there are some certain tools, but these tools are not uh, ASD specific. So with the backdrop of this, uh, uh, we developed some uh, our particular pipeline followed by a prioritization score. Uh, so before diving into that pipeline, uh, the data we used uh, is collected from the uh, three centers, uh, Zerzalem, Asafarope and Soroka. And after collecting the data, the, uh, the DNA sample was uh, uh, sequenced and, <coughs> and when we got the data at a computerized format, it's PCF, it's a text file, and then uh, we started implementing our pipeline. So the first step was to remove all those low quality variants, variant sites, and those variants which are common in nature. Then we implemented uh, the, the ACNG interpretation to interval to, to integrate the criteria of uh, ACNG. And we also developed a tool, Cyvariant, which integrates different in silico criteria to interpret sequence variant as GDVs. Uh, and the whole pipeline is focused on uh, such kind of variants like de novo, where father and mother are uh, homozygous to the reference, and child is affected and have carries the heterozygous mutation. And in case of sex, link, sex linked and recessive, so such kind of uh, inheritance pattern we followed. and. Uh, and one important point here is the, uh, the, the list of variants from interval can be overlapped with the list of variants of side So, and vice versa. So, we combined this particular output and then we implemented the prioritization score which we developed. Uh, it's all scored uh, on this particular combined output. And once we implemented that prioritization score, we send this particular list to our clinician the clinician checks all the uh, information manually from different literature, uh, patient phenotypes and all. And after getting the clinician's uh, assessment, we send the, those positive results to the families. So until now, through this pipeline, we have uh, analyzed uh, more than 550 uh, families, which includes some multiplex and simplex and a uh, total of uh, 13, more than 1,300 probands, uh, samples including uh, affected probands, their siblings and their parents. Uh, now talking about this particular um, scoring mechanism uh, which we implemented after this particular step. Uh, so this particular score was developed to, uh, based on seven modules to capture variance pathogenicity, uh, gene disease association, deleteriousness, clinical relevance, uh, inheritance pattern, and family score. So, so the 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 score was developed as a as a trial and error uh, approach. So we we assign some weights uh, based on the clinician's assessment. We check if those assignments are like uh, true or not. In what what way direction they they are going in that way. We assign those weights, and let's say one example, like in a family of two provinces, uh, if two affected provinces, if the child has a deleterious uh, mutation according to two fields, and uh, it's a likely pathogenic one according to interval, then the child could get some, some sort of score, like let's say nine, based on those weights, based on this. If it is a likely pathogenic, it will get uh, three from interval. If it is uh, Two tools are suggesting that variant as uh, deleterious, it will get, uh, and, and it is a missense one, then it will get a score of two. And then same goes with the gene disease association. So if the gene is pretty much relevant for ASD or its related <coughs> so it's going to get a score of uh, two or three based on the uh, weight of this particular gene disease association. Um, sorry. 
So uh, by combining all those, we got some summarized score and we implemented to our output and this score ranges from minus 4 to 23. So after implementing those score, we send those variants which have which belong to the upper quartile of uh, of score. They they were sent for clinical evaluation, and uh, once we got it, so this is the distribution of uh, after we got the clinical evaluation. You see this, this particular uh, particular uh, in case of score greater than equal to 10 or 11 most of these particular variants are AST relevant. So higher the odd score value, better the relevance in case of AST. So to use this particular score critically more, uh, we wanted to check the cutoff of this particular uh, score. And uh, since we have a truth set now, because the after clinically uh, assessing, we have a list of true ASD variant and false for ASD variant or unrelated something like that. So we used those particular assessment to uh, detect those cutoff and uh, checking the detection accuracy and uh, diagnostic yield, the cutoff suggests that greater than equal to 12 should be used. And we checked the similarly through another approach uh, through ROC curve, uh, which suggests the cutoff should be greater than equal to 2 <coughs> again. Uh, using this approach, we until now we have detected uh, 55 ASD candidate variants, which are very relevant for uh, autism, and uh, which uh, leads the diagnostic yield to be 14 percent, and that is pretty much comparable because last year one study came and it suggested the yield to be. Uh, 15% from the whole genome sequencing and uh, in their study they have included also mitochondrial DNA uh, variants and CNBs all those things which eventually if we could include in our assessment the yield would go relatively higher. Um, most of the variants were detected among highly confident safari genes. Safari genes are uh, published uh, ASD genes and uh, most of them are likely pathogenic and pathogenic, which is expected. And uh, we found 10 variants in 10 new genes, which can have a potential role uh, in, in case of autism. And uh, since we are getting new data and we are uh, analyzing them and we are uh, also finding some other uh, new genes in, in, in these data sets. And most detected variants are of missense uh, types and uh, these variants were never linked with ASD before. Uh, we did some uh, gene set enrichment analysis uh, on, on those variants detected in different genes. We took those gene set and we ran some uh, analysis on, on that to check what kind of uh, pathways are enriched in those genes, what kind of gene ontology terms or what kind of disease terms are enriched in those genes. And expectedly, the most of the genes uh, are falling in those pathways which are well established for autism like synapses um, and all. And uh, one important point to note here, uh, this particular gene which I did not disclose, uh, this particular gene is a new gene and this uh, gene is behaving like an autism gene and falling connected with the pathways like uh, those synapses and all. And similar goes with this graph. Here also we are seeing the enriched disease terms which are more relevant, more or less relevant in autism. Uh, we ran a separate analysis uh, on those uh, only new genes and uh, we also found some pathways which are uh, related to autism, uh, the synaptic vesicle pathway. Uh, it's uh, related to ASD and epilepsy and same goes with signal transduction it's also relevant for uh, chronic schizophrenia and the disease terms also overlapping with the uh, uh, autism related disorder and that suggests that it has a high priority effect that means that uh, one kind of variant in, in a specific gene can influence many other uh, phenotypes. Uh, we ran a tissue expression analysis uh, where we, we, we found that um, these particular 10 genes are mostly uh, enriched in uh, brain tissues 
there are some other tissues as well uh, you can see some some of them are in liver kidney heart so uh, we uh, assess them uh, the, but uh, we don't know maybe uh, this particular thing can be uh, said more when uh, my colleague Ohad is going to present his uh, uh, project uh, so so <coughs> So some examples of those variants detected in, the, in different families. Uh, so this is in a new gene and it's a de novo variant and it was detected by intervar and cyvariant both. Intervar was the ACNG interpretation tool and cyvariant our own in-house tool. So after this uh, implementation, we found this particular variant and uh, it's related to classical lysencephaly, which is a brain disorder, pretty much high correlation. And same goes with this VPS 13B autosomal recessive variant, uh, which was only detected by Psi variant. Intervert could not detect it as likely pathogenic and pathogenic, but it's a potential variant. Uh, similarly, like uh, the sex linked variant in HCFC1 gene, and this variant was also detected by uh, Psi variant only. So that reflects about uh, a point that integration of different tools is useful for the detection of different type of mutation otherwise this kind of mutation would have been um, uh, undetected uh, for example so we check the validity of this particular scoring approach using the uh, comparing the comparing the new uh, tool which is published related to neurodevelopmental disorder so last year uh, this autocasty tool was published which can prioritize a different kind of variants in neurodevelopmental <laughs> disorder as, a, as an umbrella term. And uh, we compared them, so their cutoff was 6. And after taking the cutoff of greater than equal to 12, uh, it seems like our tool is performing well. Uh, because in this in these clusters of points, if you can see, there most of them are false positive. Uh, they are unrelated to ASD but still this particular tool is detecting them. Whereas if we if we can use our approach, our cutoff, cut uh, most of the variants are detected which are true positive in nature. We are also missing some of them. They are also missing most of them. So we further assess the concordance between this tool to uh, percentage agreement and points kappa and our tool is performing pretty much well because we checked this with the clinical assessment and it's suggesting that uh, pardon, that 84% uh, of the agreement and the point kappa value is statistically significant with 0 0.64 um, <laughs> with all those things, uh, in summary, we can say that integrating uh, such kind of tools would be beneficial and our prioritization score is pretty much effective in detecting candidate variants in known as well as unknown ASD genes. And uh, the diagnostic yield is right now 14%, but it's going to improve when we are going to uh, include such kind of variants like dominant variants, that means one of the parents is affected and right now in our database most of the parents are we assume they are unaffected because they reported like that but they can be uh, affected they have they may fall into some spectrum of autism and considering those hypotheses uh, different kind of variants can be detected uh, and compound heterozygote type of variants uh, cnvs and mitochondrial variants so we extended this particular analysis uh, in case of detecting dominant and uh, recessive variants in multiplex families and we are getting some uh, good signals for example this particular uh, variant in a cacna one c gene and this variant was uh, detected uh, uh, in the multiplex family and we assume that the parent is uh, affected but they, they have not reported it and uh, both the child has this mutation. Same goes with this one, Singap one. Uh, it's a autosomal recessive variant, and uh, the, both all the childs have the same mutation. So, with this, I would like to thank my uh, advisor, Professor Idar Menashe. Uh, uh, I would also like to thank Noah Arba, who did all this clinical work, and her, using her assessment, we uh, validated our results. And I also would like to thank all the people, all the professors behind this work. Uh, thank you so much.